I am Tatiana Doncaster, the Finance Director for British Rowing, and for the next 10 minutes or so we'll be talking about transformation, but in slightly less technical terms. So, interestingly enough, transformation for me, or anything that I deal with within finance, is normally aligned to simple terms, the things that I can personally relate to. As a great Disney fan, Snow White lends herself perfectly with the way that she has gone through her journey and transformed her environment. I think Mary Poppins is also great, but um, this is less copyright because it's 1937. So, um, our favorite Disney movies are things, things we can relate to, and actually thinking about it, you know, in our family, it's probably about three years after release when you were able to appreciate some. So mine is Winnie the Pooh, my kids are uh, The Little Mermaid, and Aladdin, which is what they really love. But <clears throat> how do we align something to do with Snow White to a transformation in general? So, story of Snow White. Who can introduce me to it? Anybody familiar with either the Grimm's fairy tale or the Disney one? Any fans of Snow White? Shall I start you off? So basically, this young lady was an evil stepmother who is, um, you know, trodden upon, becomes a scullery maid, in the end gets exiled to the forest and bef befriends some dwarfs. So, why do we feel, so what is in her journey is so transformational and we can relate to. This young lady turns up in the middle of nowhere after a very treacherous journey in the forest where she's completely petrified, befriends some people on her way who she initially is not particularly relating to. In fact, she's scared of them. She thinks they're out there to lurk and do something and, you know, petrify her. So potentially this is the environment we're coming into, where we're coming into transformation. It's an entirely unknown world. We're not really sure what to expect. If we're in a new company, we're potentially, as much as we try to be open and positive, we're potentially think thinking that there are some dangers lurking behind us and people are out to get us, or this environment is really scary. Oh my God, how am I gonna complete it? So, um, some of us are lucky and work for enormous companies. My career over 25 years has been in small businesses or charities, and we don't have the resource to have the amazing transformation, beautiful systems to introduce, and huge budgets to come in and plow into our finance systems. So what do you do? You use existing skills, existing tools. So Snow White turns up, Stuff in this house, yes, they've got brooms, yes, they've got washing up tools, yes, they've got everything else. Do they use it? No, they do, don't really. Dusts it off, off she goes. Clears out the place, you know, does it with assistance of people, but ultimately, she's probably, in this instance, hasn't got the budget to go off to the nearest Walmart or whatever it is and purchase something to assist her to use what they've got. Cloths, you know, whatever it is she was using um, all around there, sweeping. Um, anything else she's got. What happened to her when she was downgraded from being a princess to being somebody who her evil stepmother didn't like? She became a scullery maid. So in essence, it's a skill that was gained by her. She really didn't want to be. This is a princess here, you know. Instead, okay, she embraces her circumstance, she's got a skill, she can relate to it. If she turned up to that house with the dwarfs without any skills whatsoever, could she have done what she's done? Probably not. So ultimately in that case, what we think about is sometimes the skills come to us in the most unexpected places. So in her case, that really wasn't her agenda when she was born. She was born in the life of luxury. Gosh, this happened. She became a scullery maid. But she used her circumstance and she used her skills and her environment to create something that then helped her transform some other things around in her life. If she didn't have that, that wouldn't have been possible. So, <clears throat> turns up, starts cleaning. What does she do? 
So cleaning out, so they've got an instrument to play, she's doing the laundry, she's doing the cleaning, so an extreme diverse range of tasks. You could be faced with anything within your environment. It might not just be financial. In my current company, I have done office refurbishment for about a year because it needed it, and I now know types of masonry paint, which is what I really didn't set out to do. It was required. Sometimes you lean into what a company requires from you under that given circumstances so you could give the most value. <clears throat> but notice that. That really irks me every time. She cleaned downstairs in the dwarf's cottage. Did she go up and clean the bedroom? No, she didn't. Then went to sleep across those beds, which again, me as somebody who's quite house proud, that irked me a little bit. I'm like, oh my God. But she only had the day to transform. <clears throat> she did the cooking, she did the cleaning, she did the laundry. That was her limitation. Be careful about spreading yourself too thinly because it's, it's really easy to say, crikey, there's a massive task. I really want to do everything. Everything needs to be transforming. <clears throat> do it step by step. Do it for your limitation. Do it for your ability. Do it for what you personally can embrace. Otherwise, you will run yourself into the ground, you will spread yourself too thinly, and you really will not get there because it's just too difficult. Sometimes transformations projects <clears throat> are a marathon, as Tim was saying, and um, it takes a long time. Take credit when it's due, be happy when it's done, but give yourself some limitations, set out the task, don't rush, don't do so something which is, um, which is beyond you, which you think you are not gonna be able to do. So, <clears throat> did, does she leave the people within the cottage or her environment to run on themselves? Who remembers the scene with the washing up? Come on, one of you has seen Snow White. Don't pretend you haven't seen it, please. It was long ago, but you know, I had to rewatch it as a part of research. So we have to, you have to run with me, okay? I really enjoyed it. My kids have got kids have got Disney Channel. So, what happens? The animals start washing up. They use their tongue to clean it. Use their tails to wipe the dishes. What does she do? Stand aside and say. Well done, guys. Yes, yeah, she is very encouraging. Great, you're doing that. Wonderful, you know. Continue with that. That's marvelous. But no, 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 no. Use the tub. So off they go and do it the, the recommended way. So as much as you're allowing a freedom of expression, you have to be on hand to support either your finance team or your operational team or your company or your board. You can't just let it slide and go, oh, okay, let's just do it the way it's been done. Or let's just do it that's expected. Or let's just do it because it's easier for them. You know, just does it in a, in a way that, that should be done, which is us as accountants. We stick to finance principles. We stick to the way that we are bound by our code of governance. We stick by the way that it should be done. However, we do allow freedom of expression. Right now, you're gonna have to participate. Who can name the seven dwarfs? Come on. Sleepy. Excellent. Brilliant, grumpy, dog. Anybody else? Wonderful. Bashful, yes, sneezy. Happy, lovely. Right, so, do we know that Walt Disney was the first person who gave personalities to the dwarfs? They were not in mass, they were individuals. When he, and, and there were all sorts of things. There were flick, glick, all sorts of things. One was supposed to be Snoopy, hence where the name was borrowed, but then they all assumed different personalities. And incidentally, when the Oscar was given, there was a large Oscar for Snow White and seven little ones for the dwarf. So I thought that was really cute. Right. So what happens to Snow White in the woods? Anybody remembers? She's petrified, there's all sorts of lights and flickering. She's running around, you know, collapses on the floor. Incidentally, Disney's target audience of five-year-olds, the seats that were sat on had to be changed because they didn't make it to the loo. Excuse me, they were so scared of that scene in the woods. 
what, what does Snow White think when she sees the small outfits, small beds in the cottage? Who does she think lives there? Does she think they're grown men? Does she suggest dwarfs? What's her perception? Children. Thank you. She thinks they're kids. Her understanding, her expectation of how she has to relate to them is one way before they come through the door. And it's like, whoopsie daisy, they're grown men. These are not just grown men, they're gemologists. These people are wealthy, they understand you know, the, the industry, they mine gold and jewels for that. Do they really need somebody turning up and cleaning their cottage? Possibly, maybe, but that's not on the list of their priorities. They don't need some girl rolling up, thinking they're kids, and treating them like kids. These are grown-ups. These are adults, you know. So, personality types of dwarfs who turn up, the ones we've encountered. Okay, these are just seven people that you might potentially see on your transformation journey. This is seven. How many people are in your team? How many people are in an organization you're transforming? A hundred? Five hundred? How many of them are, know things and are very competent? Somebody who doesn't take you on, they're just going to say, bugger off, I'm not interested, you're talking a load of rubbish, I'm not going to embrace it. Somebody who is jo jolly and happy, oh great, you know, new challenge, it's really good, we've not had it before, let's have a roll with it. <clears throat> Somebody who's just... Uninterested, you know, it's fine. I've been here for a while. Uh, it's, not, it's not anything that interesting that you can introduce to me. Somebody who's got some underlying health conditions, so allergies or things like this or whatever it is, that potentially they can't make it to the office, they're too poorly to make it, and you have to sort of make allowances for that productivity and everything else. Somebody who's too shy to speak. They're unable to express themselves. You know, and somebody who is potentially got a disability, so somebody who can't talk. You know, how are you going to deal with that? Disney had shown us they're not in mass. They're all different things. They're all different entities. They're not just one person. And therefore, <clears throat> when you're coming in for your transformation, you can't have a one-fits-all approach. You need to know who are they, what makes them tick, how can you relate to them, how can, how can they understand you? How can they embrace you? And how can they go with you? Because unless you endear yourself to your community, you will not move forward. You can come in, you can shove your legalese, you can do all sorts of information. We're all competent people. But how do you endear people so they transform with you? You can't do things to them. Nobody appreciates that. So, individual approach. What does she do? I was particularly loving that. She made pies for all of them and written their names on them. The girl was a cookery genius. I don't know how you can put a name in dough on a pie. That's beyond me, you know. Dopey needed a bit of support, kissed him on the head, you know, the scene where they were running in and out. Somebody needs a more personal approach. Somebody needs for them to, you know, to be embraced and understood. Somebody needs to, that competence. Somebody needs, you know, it depends. But it's up to you as an individual to be alert and understand what people's needs are. Because not one approach fits all. So, what can help us along our journey? Do we remember the scene where she forced them to wash their faces? Yeah? What happened? So what's her motivation? She made them some hot food. Yeah? Maybe they it doesn't look like a cook has been used for a while, or whatever she's using in the cauldron. Don't have time. Guys are working full time. Hot meals are not on the thing. I don't know if they've got meals on wheels in that woods of, of theirs, but it's probably likely that they're having dry food and whatever's grown in their uh, cottage garden or something, or collect berries, I don't know, dry mushrooms. So, soup, what, do you, what does she do? She encourages them. She says, you can't sit to the table unless you wash your hands because you've produced something that would motivate them. It's quite nice to get a hot bowl of soup after a hard day. What do they do? Okay, let's embrace it. Some happily, some reluctantly. What happens to Grumpy? Gets dumped into the pail of water by his peers because they've all cleaned themselves. They noticed he hasn't done, 
And at that point, they've embraced it so much, they were willing to peer pressure somebody else and say, come on, you are embracing that. You are doing that. What else helped her? Why were they willing to support her? Her reputation. She was a princess. They instantly recognized that. She said, I'm Snow White. They said, oh, you're a princess. We know of you. Your reputation over the years of what you carry was on transformation would pave your way as well. So if you're known was in the industry, we're a very small environment. A lot of people know each other. We all go to conferences and chat on LinkedIn and do things, you know. Remember, that's how you're viewed in your public profile, in the way that you're presenting yourself, in the things that you do, because people might have heard of you as well. And if you're turning up to a company with a good reputation, that will help you along the way. So, most important of all, have fun. Don't make it a project which gives you a headache and you really hate and you don't want to do, and it wakes you up at night and you think, oh my God, why did I get involved in it? There will be parts to it, but if you yourself are not enjoying it, nobody around you will, and it will become a drag, it will be boring, it will be something people will not subscribe to, and in the end, it's possible to fail, or it's a lot easier to fail. Have a joyful time, enjoy it. Find your own Disney character and assign to them. If it's not that, find Transformers, or I don't know what films you like. And that association, that's something else that maybe brings up an inner child, or makes you happy, or makes you content, will maybe help your way to transformation. Okay, any questions? <laughs> So we've got a wandering mic, uh, the lady here. Um, Tatiana, a lot of what you said really resonates with me, the sort of roll up your sleeves, get involved with things that are sort of outside your traditional sort of finance director type role. Um, and I'm, I, I completely agree with your approach about treating people as individuals. But how do you go about doing that when you've got, say, you know, remote working, perhaps you've had people who've been onboarded during the, the pandemic, so it's difficult to get to know them. What advice would you offer? And I think the other point I'd, I'd add and welcome your advice on is it can be very draining to be constantly putting yourself out there. So, so how do you keep that fun and keep that joy? I think it depends. I think with transformation and, and lockdown, this is a new topic for all of us. How do we manage? I can tell you how we manage at British Rowing, and that seems to work. Firstly, we have an online journal which goes out once a week. And uh, we have our CEO who has a piece every week who talks about things within the company. But the directors, so the other four directors, have a piece every week. So in mine, I am really careful about not bamboozling people. So I take a topic, for example, I take what is a P60? What is your pension? What's a P45? How do you manage, I don't know, what is accruals? What is prepayments? And I talk about it, not in a language which is patronizing, but in a language which people can understand. I break it down. I joke about it. There's things, my next one will have a TikTok of me running down the hills to the sound of music. You see the Disney theme emerging because the audit is over. So I have promised people I will do that. You know, it, it's something ultimately cater to your person. We've done some seminars to our rowing communities which have been called demystifying finance. So talking to them about general concepts, what can we understand, what can we do? And yes, it is online and yes, it is not as personal personal, but that helps for us. And having, okay, it is draining, but having meetings. So our finance team has a hangout every day. Sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's half an hour, half an hour tops. Sometimes we talk about things within the office, sometimes it's whatever the audience has been going through, some things, whatever it is. Sometimes we talk about films, sometimes we talk about movies, sometimes we talk about, I don't know, songs we like, what's on the charts, something along those lines. Make it, go with the conversation that people want to have. And it's a similar way where we meet with all the budget holders, it's the same conversation. We are respected for our knowledge, but they think we're a bit of fun, and I think I'll run with it, because because people embrace us, and over the past, well, my financial control is here, and she's been here two years, mine is a year and a half, we see transformation, and the stakeholders are noticing that, and that's been in lockdown. Does that help? Anyone else?
Thank you, Tatiana. Um, I've done a few transformation projects and I, I feel there's always, always a point where you kind of got your head in your hands going, Christ, uh, it's really not Definitely. working. And um, you, what do you do when you're in that moment? Because, you know, transformation is risk. You have to be on point. Yes, it is risk. If you are, in this instance, a transformation leader, you almost can't afford to be. But two things. I think it's okay to let people see your weakness and say, crikey, you know, that's getting a bit much. But maybe share it with somebody you trust. So if you have your good relationship with CEO, talk to them about it. Or somebody who you trust within the company or something like that. But ultimately, then do something which charges you back up. You know, if you want to dance away the night to, I don't know, some 80s pop music, this is my thing, yeah? Uh, do it. You know, you need to charge up. We all need to charge our batteries. And I think particularly in lockdown, that is so important. Do something that makes you happy. I eat and cook Thai food. That makes me happy. Off I go and do that. What is your thing? What makes you happy? What makes you charge? Because yeah, you will come to that point where you think, crikey, I've had enough, I'm walking. Anyone else? If we can try and get a question here, then there, then there, so that we can get. <laughs> I really love your personality. Sorry. I have to I just have to say that out loud. Um, <clears throat> how how do you influence other members within the senior leadership team to be as awesome as you are and embrace the change that that that. I think we're very lucky within members of our senior leadership team that they are sort of, in some respects, as quirky, but it's probably taken my, my sense of fun to make them even more fun than they have been before I've joined. You know, I've arrived and I said, I'm the Mary Poppins of finance. Because I come in, I transform, and I move on when the wind changes. You know, um, again, it's the same thing. You've got to have your wins. So... People in our senior leadership team, there's six of us overall. If we're not friends and are not aligned and are not working well together, we can't then spread it out further. So we've now gone this first step where we've aligned ourselves as, as this team. We're now having conversation with the heads of teams, which is a much broader group. So there's about 20 people whereby we're spreading the idea further out. And because finance and other teams have been doing communication about how to transform, how to do things. People embrace ideas, but it's important to hear everybody and make them feel like an individual. Because if you start bamboozling them, you've lost them. And it's very easy to do so. I think there's a lot of preconceptions about finance personality. Yes. But do you know what accountants are fun? We are fun, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, what was that meme going around? I do what accountants do. You know, my kids showed me. I'm an accountant. I'm doing this. And they're pole dancing. Oh, you know, you never know. There is also a free bar at the end of this as well. So you can... I shall not be demonstrating pole dancing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my older daughter does it, incidentally, as exercise. But there we go. Right, enough of personal disclosure. Anyone else? Hi, and thank you for the lovely presentation, especially like the Pleasure. storytelling. Um, I don't have, in my company, I don't have seven drafts to help me out. So sometimes I'm the person putting the decisions into the things and cleaning stuff and all. Mm -hmm. And I have limited resources always, and there are always fires to put out and processes. Mm -hmm. all. So often it results in, okay, who, who's going to solve this problem? Ah, mm -hmm. give it to him because he's mm -hmm. done it several times. Mm -hmm. um, so how do I manage that? Because often I'm the go-to person for many things, even outside my emit, because I do tend to solve things and put them back on track sometimes. Sometimes I break things, sometimes I repair them. So exactly, so how do, how do I manage that when you have limited people to help you out and often there's pressure from the CEO giving you a call every day. Oh, you have you sorted that out? Uh, well, well, I've sorted that out, but not that. Okay, I'll jump on that. I think first question, do you enjoy that? Yes, or does it drive you mad? You yeah, enjoy it. Does, it. Okay, but sometimes that's the it first gets step towards it. You know, you enjoy it. Ultimately, there are people within the company who you can endear to be your help. So I will give you an example. My risk register when I came in was an entire load of mess. I am not as strong on Excel as I could be. The youngsters baffle me when they go off and do all sorts of things and it sings and dances. I'm oh my God, what did you do? So we have a head of our youth throwing who we heard was good on Excel. 
involved. So I turned around and said, you know, we need this risk register improving. Do you want to have a crack? He embraced it. He said, you know what? I, I'm really enjoying it. I checked in a few times and said, do you feel put upon? Have we just dumped this project on you and you're just doing that? He said, you know what? It makes such a change from the things that I do on a regular basis. I'm actually having fun here. So if you hear of somebody within a broader network, why not share with them? It gives them an extra skill and in effect sell it as an extra skill. Say, you know what? If you do that, you can put that on your CV. You can, you know, you can embrace, you can develop. This is some other area. Also, Embrace your network. You know, we're all on LinkedIn. People approach me sometimes and chat to me and everything else. I'm very happy to help. And I reach out to my NGB sports network and say, crikey, guys, I've got a problem. What do I do with it? People are supportive. Generally, I think, particularly post-pandemic, I think we're really, really happy and glad to assist somebody else who is near us. Does that help a little yeah, bit? Yeah, definitely. And I'm sending you a LinkedIn request after Of this, course. So. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the presentation. So my question is, um, th this all sounds lovely and Snow White is dancing and having fun, but what happens when the dwarfs are not on side, when, when there's complacency and they actually don't want to change? They will never want to change to start with. You know, ultimately, is, is Snow White dancing through her tears? Possible. You know what? You have to, to some extent, present a front. You have to be. If you're the champion for transformation, you have to be cheerful about it because people follow you and, and, and do it. Ultimately, there are boundaries that you set in the beginning where you say, you know, people probably will not abide. People know that as an accountant, I've got integrity and I will not go beyond the point. And ultimately, I don't like being stern and serious or pulling rank or saying something like that. But if, if a boundary is breached, it can't be breached because it's getting pulled back into there you have to ultimately set up some of the projects of transformation around you and maybe be a part of other teams. So as much as, you know, I'm the finance director, I sit on the senior leadership team, I sit on some of, the, some of our championship teams, I sit on some of the sort of, you know, and I, I relate closely to human resources or IT or other departments. People have to know about you. I know you can't spread yourself too thinly, you have to almost endear the whole group because out of that group of all the dwarfs with different personalities, there will be somebody who is happy within the company. Maybe not in your finance team, but somewhere else. And once you've got one person supporting you, you can relate to them how I'm relating to you here. You try and pick out a person who is nodding along to you and going, yes, Tatiana, you're doing great. You know, once you've got somebody who embraces you, there might be one or two or three or five people, but once you've got a, got a group around you, it's so much easier. Don't be a standalone. Try Try and find a group of like-minded individuals. Maybe they're not within finance, maybe somewhere else, and that will aid you on your journey. Pleasure. Great. Well, thank you very much.